Hello, thank you for joining us. Now, you can get this latest update. We're talking about TV3 Ghana on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And then also you get all the latest when it comes to 3FM 92.7. But for all the things that we have to discuss, well, the number of issues that currently are gaining a lot of traction. We're talking about a petition that has been sent by two members of parliament who have distinguished themselves in the house. We're talking about Samuel Lukujetua Blakwa, who is a member of parliament for North Tong, and then also for Elembele. We have Emmanuel Ama Kofi Boa, but there are bigger discussions. It is because there have been a number of incidents that they have chronicled because of incidents that have happened within the general election of 2020 that have not been dealt by the national security apparatus that they want the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice to take a look at. Well, we're here joined by Samuel Okuja to Black Wine. Thank you for joining us. You take a look at your petition. I've uh, comprehensively looked at it. Why did you decide to do this petition or undertake this petition at this time, um, eight months since we had the election? Well, first of all, let me confirm that the Honorable Emmanuel Amakofi Boa and I have successfully filed a complaint at the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice. We were successful in that the charge is now seized with this complaint. And as you have observed, we are seeking to invoke the mandate of charge under Article 218 of the 1992 Constitution, requiring of charge to investigate the human rights violations that occurred during the December 7, 2020 elections. These are grave violations which led to the killing of at least seven of our compatriots. Many have been maimed, many have lost limbs, many have had life-changing consequences as a result of the excesses and the reckless conduct of persons purporting to be security agents purporting to be officers of the National Election Security Tax Force. If we do not carry out any proper and thorough investigations into what transpired during the last election, we will be setting such a bad precedent, very unhealthy for our democracy and for the peace and stability of our country. It will mean that the upcoming elections from 2024 and beyond, we will have opened the floodgates where during elections, some people will think that they have the license to kill and that they will get away with it. So it is in the interest of the sustenance of our democracy. It is in the interest of the pursuit of justice that all of these seven persons who have died, that they are deaf must not be in vain. In Techiman South, 39-year-old Tajuddin Al-Hassan died. 18-year-old Abdullah Ayarik died. He was shot and killed. In the Savluku constituency, 14-year-old Samira Zakaria shot and killed. 15-year-old Fusein Musa shot and killed. At Ablikuma Central constituency, 30-year-old Ibrahim Abbas shot and died from the gunshot wounds days after. And I recall visiting him at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. And I saw how the young man, 30-year-old, battling for his life. At the Ododododio constituency, 36-year-old Emmanuel Dompre shot and killed. 15-year-old Rita Otu shot and killed. These are young, baden Ghanaians. Only God knows who they will have grown up to become to help in the transformation, the forward march of this country. Their lives have been cut short because of elections. Nobody deserves to be killed any time in our history, let alone during elections. And look at the tall list, the compilation we have put together and presented to Shraj. People who have been maimed, people who have lost their limbs, we cannot accept this and we cannot continue to pretend that 
these gross human rights violations, these grave atrocities did not occur during the December 7, 2020 elections. I mean, we cannot continue to gloss over them. We cannot continue to conceal them. And the silence must be a scar on our conscience. And that is why we have brought this action. And we expect Shraj to live up to his constitutional obligations and pursue this matter vigorously and thoroughly and make sure that the perpetrators are brought to justice and ensure also that if there are persons high up in the chain of command, including the ministers responsible, the minister responsible for defense, the minister responsible for the, for the interior, who as politicians probably stood to gain from this high-handedness, the reckless use of force, they must be made to account for their actions. And also, we are demanding compensation for the victims. Yes, those who have died, we cannot bring them back. But they've left, some of them have left young children, some of them have left families that are in distress. They deserve compensation. There are also those who have been maimed, who have lost limbs, who have had life-changing injuries. There are medical bills so far, and some of them who have become economically incapacitated, if you like, where they no longer, you know, can be uh, useful to themselves in terms of uh, economic, you know, viability. We expect Shraj to carry out an assessment of all of these matters and recommend an adequate sum of money to be paid to these people by the state by way of compensation. You take a critical look at all the things that have transpired. There are questions being answered as to um, is it just the victims who are the victims as they are, but they could also be instigators or perpetrators in this action. This was not even a rowdy crowd. If you see the video footage, which you have in the media, take Techiman South. They were at the Bonchampim Collation Center waiting for results to be declared, which is what happens in this country. Voters are encouraged to stay on and monitor the process. We count in Ghana, we count publicly, one, two, three, four, we all count along. They were not armed. They didn't charge on any officer. Totally unprovoked. And then you shoot into crowds, live bullets, and kill people. And my brother, it will interest you to note that we have also secured medical reports of these persons, which we have submitted to Shraj. If you look at the medical reports on mobility on one of the victims, Abdullah Ayarik, in Techiman South, 18 years old, sex male, and this is from the National Catholic Health Service Diocese of Techiman, the Techiman Hospital. The doctor who signs, Dr. Ninang Tobias, emergency medicine. He writes, the above named person, Abdullah Yarek, 18 years, was rushed to an emergency unit at approximately 19 hours GMT on 8 December 2020. On initial assessment, patient was unresponsive, bleeding from ear, nose and throat, puncture wounds to upper body, neck and back, metallic object, pellets dislodged from a puncture wounds on body, vitals unrecordable, no cardiorespiratory activity, pupils fixed and dilated, impression clinically dead. RIP, brought in dead. Plan, inform relatives, take to mock. RIP, thank you, sincerely was yours, Dr. Ninan Tobias. So they shot to kill. They shot at the upper body of this young man who was just in a crowd. Take the second report on mobility. OPD number 35025 stroke 20. Name. Mohammed Tajuddin, 43 years, sex male. Date of admission, 8 December 2020. Time reported, 4 p.m. Presenting complaints, breathlessness, penetrating neck injury. Primary survey, airway compromised. Tracheal injury, breathing inadequate. Bilateral chest injuries. Assessment, patient underwent resuscitation. Bilateral chest tubes passed, taken to ICU. At 19.30 hours, patient condition deteriorated and was declared clinically dead, RIP. 
Thank you. Sincerely yours, Dr. Ninan Tobias. Mr. Kujo to Ablakwa, realistically, the Ghana Police Service is a very reputable institution, an institution that have been able to count that reputation because they've worked hard at it. Of course, they may have their own um, setbacks as far as this is related. But I take a look at um, uh, from page 11 going, and you have stated that a reputable institution such as the Ghana Police Service abuse its power and the rights of citizens right in this petition you will definitely be caught in some level of public distrust to the police service, won't you? You see, it is important to emphasize that the Ghana police service, and for that matter, the entire national security apparatus of our country, has not covered itself in glory in this matter. They have not acted in ways that will inspire public confidence. They have not conducted themselves since these very unfortunate and dastardly acts took place on the 7th of December, the 8th of December, and the 9th of December. The National Election Security Task Force issued this statement, a copy of which I, I, I had here, chronicling the killings and the events that led to these gross human rights violations. In their own statement, they had this to say, the National Election Security Task Force deems the incidents recorded to be incidents that could have been avoided. These are not my words, their own words. A statement they issued on the 10th of December. These incidents recorded to be incidents that could have been avoided and therefore condemns the occurrence and promises to investigate each of them. Since the 10th of December, more than seven months down the lane, not even an update to the general public. We don't know who is conducting this investigation. Which committee did they set up? Who is looking into these matters? Who has been interdicted? And in carrying out the research to go to church, we have been impressed at how so much evidence is available all over the place, particularly thanks to you in the media who covered these incidents. TV3, the Ablekuma Central, a lot of the footage that we have sent to Shwach is from TV3, the TV3 newsroom, your colleagues. They were there and captured everything live. You could see the officers who pulled the trigger, live ammunition on helpless, hapless, armless civilians. Nobody has been inter interdicted. Nobody has been sanctioned. Is the Ghana Police Service, is the Ghana Armed Forces, is the Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, who is also the Chair of the National Security Council by the Constitution of this Republic, telling us that they haven't seen these videos, that this footage that is all over the place, including amateur, we were amazed at the volume of amateur video available. Because in this digital age, thanks to smartphones, people have captured these incidents and they are in circulation on social media. All of this has been made available on pen drives. I mean, we are not professionals. We don't have the uh, apparatus of the state and all the resources that the state has. But we have been able to compile this evidence, which we have sent to Shwaj. So the police has lost credibility in these matters. So even if they claim to be carrying out any investigation, the way they have conducted themselves, no sanctions, nobody has been interdicted, nobody has been identified. And what is even more tragic, hmm? many weeks after and months thereafter, when their supervising ministers appeared before us at the appointments committee, you know I used to serve on the appointments committee, and I made it a point to ask these ministers, what have you done? These things happened, you remain in office more than a month after, before 
the president made reappointments or that tenure was dissolved automatically midnight of uh, January 6. At least you were in office since December 7. You were in office to midnight of January 6. They had not even visited the victims in hospital. They had not commenced investigations. They just put out this statement as a ruse, probably to get the, the public to um, sit back and, uh, uh, I mean, just put the public off and get the pressure off them. Nothing has been done. That is why we believe that it is time for Shraj to take this matter up. In any case, we do not think that the police should be investigating itself in these matters. We do not think that it will inspire public confidence. We do not think that uh, the, there will be any trust in the credibility mm -hmm. of the work that these security agencies will have conducted. I am not saying that I don't have respect for our institutions or our security agencies. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that it is even in their own interest, mm -hmm. especially having conducted themselves in such an abysmal manner, having eroded the little trust that many people in the general public have when it comes to these matters. They should just welcome this development and allow the Shraj to carry out its constitutional mandate as provided by Article 218 so that we'll have an independent body that goes into these matters. If people are identified, which we expect to be the case, the perpetrators, we see them on video, trigger happy, just recklessly firing. I mean, what happened to rubber bullets? If you take the victims that you've itemized, how did you come by this conclusion that these actions, gross as they are, could have been perpetrated by national security personnel who have been assigned on the day in these respective areas. Why should we go into an election, a peaceful democratic exercise, to elect our leaders? And this is what these young folks, I mean, they were not armed. They had not provoked anything. And, and, and I mean, for more than seven months, the Commander-in-Chief will not say a word. He's presented several State of the Nation addresses, at least two. One, before his tenure came to an end, as the Constitution requires, and the second one at the beginning of his second term. Not a word. And you recall that when we raised surprise and outrage, the first WT speaker told Ghanaians that uh, these are criminals and that um, we should stop disturbing their, their ears. I mean, even if you catch an armed robber in the act, is this, is, this, is this what you do? I mean, this is a republic uh, that is governed by law. There is a constitution that regulates the affairs of states. And all of us are under the laws of this country. We can't be having extrajudicial killings. People take the law into their own hands and just shoot at will, and nothing happens. I mean, what kind of democracy are we building? And all of us as political actors must be concerned. Even our friends in the MPP must be happy we have brought this action, because if not, we are all at risk. We go out there ensuring that things are going well on election day, that our polling agents are OK, they are being taken care of, they have been fed, and they are pursuing their responsibilities. But if a precedent is established, and a certain impunity takes hold where people think that on election day they have the license to shoot at anybody and they will get away with it there will be no investigation no sanctions perpetrators will not be brought to book there will be no justice then we are not safe oh it's an interesting point of discussion uh, we will again be looking at these contents that you've sent before the Commission for Human Rights Administrative Justice. I'll take a look at them comprehensively as we continue with the discussions. And thank you for joining us and thank you for uh, highlighting the content of this petition. But we've been speaking to Samuel Okujetua Blakwa. He is a member of parliament for North Tong. Uh, well, alongside him, uh, he, we have his colleague, Emmanuel Amakufibwa. He's a member of parliament for Lembele. And they've decided jointly to petition the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice. And it's all because we believe a number of incidents that have led to fatalities 
uh, during the 2020 elections may have taken place, but they want the commission to investigate this. We'll see how this investigation uh, is undertaken by Strange, but you can get all this latest update as we have this also uploaded on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And then also get all the latest through the same handles of 3FM 92.7. Bye-bye. Uh,